I joined the Hong Kong Police Force in October 1994. Uh, I was very lucky to get in as overseas recruitment was just ending. And I joined the police force because my father was an officer in the force and I had grown up seeing him do many challenging and exciting things. And uh, I formed the childhood dream of serving in the, the force to police tactical unit, emergency unit and small boat division. My grandfather came to Hong Kong in the 1920s and he worked in uh, China coastal trade. Uh, he was imprisoned by the Japanese when the Japanese invaded Hong Kong and in prison he met my grandmother and my father was born in the Stanley internment camp during the war. After the war my grandfather became a salvage master and my father joined the force. I was born in Hong Kong. I have been in Hong Kong for nearly 48 years. One of the great reasons for anyone to, to join the force is that you can do many, many different things. I've served on land for eight years, and I've also served in marine for nearly 20 years, uh, but there are many opportunities in the force, and you are a member of the force. You're not just marine police or land police. You're a member of the Hong Kong police. I think that over the course of the last 14 months, both facing the difficult times last year and also what we've faced this year with COVID-19, I think the men and women of the force have performed outstandingly and uh, I have nothing but admiration, particularly for the officers on the front line. I think that they have done everything that they could to keep Hong Kong safe. I was actually very shocked when I saw police officers uh, having petrol bombs thrown at them. But I was also incredibly impressed by the restraint shown by those officers. They, they responded incredibly bravely and with great restraint. If you look overseas to other jurisdictions and you see the responses to expressions of violence against police officers, I think you'll find that the Hong Kong police force is very restrained. I think that items were thrown on railway tracks which could have disrailed trains, which could have injured hundreds of people. I think that the level of violence and the criminal damage, it was basically wanton destruction, was, was shocking and it was the duty of the force to bring restore order and I think that it did that. The events last year and, and early this year uh, was over a very long period of time and you saw um, frontline police officers uh, exposed to high levels of violence and they kept their calm and they kept their control. Despite, you think about it, the summer in Hong Kong is very hot, the winter is very cold, the guys were working very very long hours on the ground, they weren't seeing their families um, you had doxing taking place, which means that officers and their families are both exposed to uncomfortable, unfair uh, situations. I think that if you go back to last year and you see how they stood together, they stood firm um, and they went out of their way to fulfill their duties and keep people safe. In the 1980s, the, the force was given the appellation Asia's finest and that remains the case today. I think that they are an example to all and they are still Asia's finest. Hong Kong has faced many challenges over the years, but every time that it's faced a challenge uh, and, or had a setback, it's just got straight back up on its feet and moved forward, and I hope that that's what will happen now. Do you feel like Hong Kong is your home? Definitely, definitely.